My name is Pranav Shukla and I welcome you to my online class. Today we are going for NCERT Standard 10 English. Our today's concern is uh, a poetry from Unit 3. Uh, there are two poetries in Unit 3. This is the second one, The Ball Bomb, that is by John Berryman. So let's quickly start the poetry, but before that, let's discuss the main storyline. See, the poetry is again with a very powerful message and, and gives you the hints of your future concern about life and life responsibilities. Here the poet is talking about a little boy who has lost his ball. As you know, the children are playing with ball. They love ball very much. They love to play with balls. So, basketballs, football, cricket. This ball is this boy is playing with randomly playing with the ball. Uh, the the setup is nearby a harbor. Maybe his parents belong to such kind of job or that can be the that could be the nearest playing place for the boy. So that is quite mysterious for us, but anyways. The ball is skipped from his hand and went into the nearby water body. So the poet is the witness of this happenings. He looks at the boy who's lost his ball. That might be his favorite ball. And that made him think about the boy and his reaction to the situation. Here the poet further says that the boy was very helplessly looking into the water where his ball had gone. He was looking very sad and he was trembling with fear. He was so engrossed in, in sorrow, in, in scare, in fear, trembling literally. And uh, he just stood nearby that harbor, nearby that water body for a very long time and kept looking at the ball. So, poet felt earlier a very sympathetic, you know, the poet felt sympathy for the boy and he almost made up his mind to buy him a new ball or give him some money to buy a new ball. But then he realizes, one you know, of the poet realizes, uh, he should stop himself, he should not do this because he thinks money may bring a new ball, but money might not bring him the memories. The feelings attached to what the lost ball. Well, look, he finds it. Well, look, he finds that buying that ball is worthless. It would not give him the joy that he would get while playing that, playing with that lost ball. And he also thinks that uh, now it is a high time that the boy should actually learn his responsibilities. He should be concerned about his possessions, and he should also be prepared for. Losing something very favorite, something very near one, something very close to his heart. So the it is a high time for the boy to learn the toughest lesson of life, the lesson of accepting the harsh realities of life. That one day he would lose his loved ones, his loved things. So it is actually the preparation for the future, for exposing yourself to the harsh society and very tough life that is going to be in the world ahead. So, it is a very different kind of subject, very unique one. This is my personal favorite one. So, let's go for reading the poetry line by line, friends. So, here you have the fragmented uh, verses of the poetry. Uh, there are no stanza basically, clearly, apparently seen over there. So, we will discuss the poetry along with the meanings and uh, figures of speech, one of the literary devices which are given at the bottom of the slide. So, also give attention to that one. So, here you have the first lines. Uh, <coughs> what is the boy now? See the See the use of the question word. What is the boy? Not who is the boy. It is what is the boy? What means 
what would be the condition of boy what would be the reaction of the boy how would be the boy after losing the ball what is the boy now who has lost his ball what what is it to do well it seems to be complete helplessness from the boy that he cannot do anything about the ball ball is almost lost is gone out of reach of the boy the poet is the witness he says i saw it go merrily bouncing matlab here the boy is bouncing merrily so boy is that that the ball seems to be personified the boy was earlier in the clutch and the, under the command of that boy now having been skipped from the boy the ball seems to be very free and freely bouncing dancing down the street and then merrily over there it is in the water so the boy is merrily bouncing sorry the ball is merrily bouncing and the ball is merrily well over the harbor and going into the water body the boy ball seems to be happy but the boy is not so the whole simplification of the stanza is well what we are supposed to understand from that the boy is talking about the poet is talking about the boy who's lost his ball now the poet wants to know wants to see the reaction of that boy uh yani matlab he himself ask matlab the poet is talking to himself that now now, now there are questions in his mind what will be done by the boy after losing the ball so the poet has seen the ball going into the water body the ball was very merrily cheerfully jumping and down in the street skipped uh, from the boy's hand and now went into the nearby river or maybe any water body so the chief thing in this stanza is the curiosity of the poet to see the reaction of the boy you can see the stanza in the see the use of word what repeatedly used over there in two or more lines so this situation falls in the figure of speech named anaphora what is the boy what what merrily bouncing merrily over so merrily merrily what what repeatedly used in more than two lines so that is anaphora then comes you can see the repeated use of the word o oh, boy now who no this is the vowel sound getting repeated again and again so there is the use of assonance then comes well the boy imagines that is the poet imagines that the ball is merrily bouncing that is sheer imagination and that creates the picture in the imagination so that is the use of imagery used by the poet figure of speech and obviously the word what is repeatedly used that is obviously the use of repetition then comes the question over there what is it to do so that is the interrogation uh, so these are the then over and water these are the words ending with the same rhymings within the same words the use internal rhymes so these are the figures of speech now the second stanza comes over there uh here the poet says no use to say can you see the ball is there in the water body then the boy is looking very sad now he's just holding his head he's looking really very green so that states the condition of the boy after losing the ball now what does the poet say let's see that no use to say oh there are other balls matlab when he buy him a ball that would not give him that joy so that, that line suggests that what they used to say there are other balls why why does he think like this why does the poet think like this because he sees the condition of the boy 
an ultimate shaking grief fixes the boy. The boy seems to be very grieved. The grief fixes him, makes him stand and stare into the water body very rigidly. He stands rigid, trembling, staring down all his young days into the harbor. Here the young days means all the memory that is connected with the that are connected with the boy as far as the ball was concerned. Boy used to play with that ball in the childhood in his young days. A lot of memories have been connected with this this ball. And you can see when the ball is in the water body, those memories are in the water bodies. But this is a very very hopelessness, very much hopelessness uh, fixing the uh, one of getting over the boy. The, the way to read this line is his ball went. Well, when you read it, read it very sadly. It is almost sighing coming out of my my mouth, my my expressions. His ball went. I would not intrude on him. Well, he would not interfere into that matter. He wanted to, but he now stops himself. A dying another ball. Friends, the word comes over there. A dying. Dying basically is ten cent. Is a U.S. currency. So another ball has got the cost only a dime means maybe around ten cents. That is too cheap, but that is again too worthless to to buy him this ball. Now he senses the first responsibility. This is a very important line, friends, over there. So, well, the poet says that there is no benefit to in consoling the boy by saying that uh, he would get another ball. Because well, a boy might also be having other balls, but this ball was quite connected to his memories. So it was very grieved. Other balls would not give him relief of losing that ball. So he was very sad. He is completely surrounded by sorrow. He said because all his memories of childhood days went and went down into the harbor with that ball. So this ball reminds him the memories of his young days, time when he owned the ball, when he played with the ball. So this ball seems to be very unbearable. So he's very grief stricken. Uh, well, a poet wants but cannot really tell the boy to take money from him to buy that ball, buy another ball, because he feels that the ball will not. Another ball, new ball will not bring that joy, that sense of belonging to that boy. So now he feels that the boy, it is a high time that the boy should sense the first responsibility of taking care of his things. So this is what is thought by the poet. It's a very strong message and very correct feeling is felt by the poet. Uh, well, sometimes parents. Uh, make the children almost handicapped regarding their things. Well, of they don't really allow them to be responsible. They are so pampered. Everything is done by the mother, the child. The child is no more responsible for any of his things, and that remains for a very long time ahead in the life. Well, of the boy almost turned out to be young adult, he still is not responsible, and that really harms his persona very well. So. Every child, every kid should be responsible at a very little early age. So it would actually be very much beneficial for him in the further young adult life. So it's a very important uh, thing drawn by the poet for our attention. Again, the figure of speech, no used to say. No is used over there is a negative idea conveyed instead of affirmation. It's the use of entities. There are other balls. An ultimate shaking grief fixes the boy here. The grief is given the the, the action of a human being fixing somebody. That is the use of personification. Then he stands rigid, trembling, staring. 
uh, two words ending with the same rhymes, that is internal rhymes. Down all his young days into the Malak, so the change of name is seen over there. Young days means all the memories connected with the ball. So the object representing the memory or something very abstract, that is a change of name, there is a use of uh, metonymy. Where his ball went, ball is going, went. So his personification. I would not intrude on him. Not again. The use of lightities. A dime, another ball is worthless. And here, a very important figure of speech comes. Uh, there is no use of conjunction used in the sentence. A dime, another ball is worthless. So it's a very new kind of figure of speech used to you. That is. Uh, uh, assign datan, assign datan would be the figure of speech over there that is quite new for you. If you have the sentence without conjunction, then it seems to be a continuous, persistent clause, but object is, uh, sorry, conjunction is totally not introduced over there or missed out. So, assign datan is the figure of speech over there. All is repeatedly used, so is the use of Repetition over there. So he senses his first responsibility. So the figure of speech of these second set of lines. So this is the now comes the another line. Now he says, in a world of possessions, people will take balls. Balls will be lost anyways, always. Little boy, that is an address to the little boy. The poet says that the world is such, people will take balls, people will take away your loved things, your loved ones away from you. You lose your loved things. And no one buys a ball. Malak, today I am ready to buy you a ball. But further in the life, when you grow up, you will be adult yourself. Stand by your own. Nobody is merciful enough to buy you the things that you have been, that you have lost. So, then you would not get your lost things back. Even if you have money. So, money is totally external. Money is totally external. So this is how he is said by the poet. And further he feels he is learning. Well behind his desperate eyes. He is desperate to get his ball back. What is he learning? The epistemology. Epistemology. That is a Greek word. Epistem means knowledge. The idea. What is the knowledge that he gets out of this experience? How to stand up? Knowing what every man must know one day means what a man must know one day. Man must know one day that is how to stand up against the loss. How to be responsible for your things. How to keep your things safe and intact. How to keep your relations ongoing. Everything one one must learn in the life. So he again reading the stanza is learning well behind his desperate eyes. What is he learning? So he's learning the epistemology of loss. One of the real truth, the knowledge of the nature of loss. Loss is inevitable in life. So if you lose, how to stand up against it? That and that has to be learned by everything, by everyone. That is must. So the epistemology of loss, how to stand up, knowing what every man must one day know and most know many days. Well, people, some some intelligent understanding. Smart people learn this epistemology of loss, the knowledge of 
the nature of laws very quickly some takes many days to learn it but they have to learn it how to stand up against what the laws so so here this clearly visible that the poet wants the boy to learn that the world is materialistic Many of his belongings would be lost. Here he personifies and compares the ball with his belongings, with his dear one, dear ones, loved things. So it would be worldly things or it would be relationships. He is in the possession of them, and he says that he has to learn to live without them, no matter what. He says. no one can buy back such things for him and uh, according to him money can't buy everything once you lose it so if it is materialistic thing it can still be bought but if it is relations something emotionally attached to it cannot be bought by even money so he says that the boy should be learning how to stand up against the sense of lost things it means the boy is trying to learn the real truth of life he states that you have to accept the miseries of life and stand up against it there is a truth which everyone has to learn in his life or her life It's the harsh truth of standing up against the odd adversities miseries and loss of life that everyone has to Bear. so this is something very very important and very powerful now again the figure of speech use of sound balls b balls b boy lot of words starting with the consonant sound b so that is the use of alliteration then comes again the repetition of the sound vowel sounds Hello, he is learning. Well, behind is the spread eye. That is the hello. If the vowel sound is repeatedly used over there, it is the use of assonance. Then ball is again repeatedly used over there. That is the use of repetition. In the world of possession, people will take balls. Balls again stand for relationships, loud things, the change of name, or for representing the whole loud things. Uh, it is synec daki. one thing stands for the whole universe whole strata so one stands for all and again the board representing all these loud things of relations that is the use of metonymy change of name no one use of negative idea that is the use of like it is all back that is again alliteration is learning well behind is desperate i desperate is the boy is not the eyes so the change of adjective from the boy to eyes adjective is changed from one noun to the closely associated noun that is the use of uh, uh, transferred epithet epistemology of laws how to stand up knowing what every man must know one day knowing no alliteration again one day and many day these are the opposite terms so this is antithesis how to stand up is again repeated over there that is refrain so if the close of the phrase is repeated again and again in the same poetry we call it as the use of refrain this is what the figure of speech the poetic device is belonging to what the poetry and the poetry is in a random verse uh, aligned over there so there is hardly any rhyme scheme over there so there is almost no rhyme scheme in the poetry so here you have the the third poetry the ball poem with a very powerful message and learning of the life i hope you understood and enjoyed the poetry i soon give you the question answers and you will submit it to me in the prescribed time thank you very much we'll meet again soon friends